All right, guys, in this one, we are going to be back on my F-150. Uh, a couple months ago, uh, the check engine light came on uh, when I was driving down the road. And the check engine light that came on was due to a P430, or P0430, I should say, which is a post-catalyst system efficiency code. Um, let me say, I already did the diagnostics onto it, and turned out that my catalytic converter was no good. So I'm going to bring you guys through. We're going to go ahead and uh, redo this, diagno this diagnosis because um, I don't really have many videos on catalytic converters. But just show you guys how you can use some basic scan data in order to go determine if your catalytic converter is working properly. Uh, when you're dealing with catal catalytic converter efficiency codes, these codes are pretty much soundproof. Um, unless you're having a really, really big issue. Uh, with like some sensor wiring or something like that. Of course, you always have to do your due diligence, check all your sensor wiring before you take and try to, before you take and replace any part. But um, with that being said, oh, 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 oh. with that being said, um, these codes are pretty soundproof, so if you have an efficiency code, 99% of the time you have an issue with a color converter. I'm just going to show you guys some basic data you guys can use. Um, I have another video on my YouTube channel. I'll post a link up here for everybody. Uh, so you guys can go and see a Kia, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Rio that I had an issue on. Alright, so what we're going to do is just click on diagno Diagnostics, press OK. I have the car started already. Um, there's going to be two or three codes into my check engine. One is for an EVAP leak, which is due to a hose that is keeps on disconnecting in the back. Um, I got to get a proper connector to fix that. Uh, after that, uh, we're going to have the post catalytic uh, efficiency code onto bank two. And then from there, I'm just going to show you guys some basic data that you guys should, uh, should be looking at. All right, so let's go in, click on diagnosis. All right, we're gonna to go to auto scan. So I have four codes into the PCM. I'll let this go through and I'll bring you guys back. All right, so let's go in and go into the PCM. Now we're gonna read our codes. We're gonna go continuous codes on this one. I might have to pause you guys because uh, the Hotel and Fords are actually uh, pretty slow. The newer ones, I have no idea how quick they are, but the, the older 908s are, uh, to take a little bit of time to get into them. All right, so the codes that we are gonna be dealing with on this one are gonna be the uh, catalyst system efficient below threshold bank two, uh, which is a history code, and then we have one that is also pending. All right, so what we're gonna do is just escape out of here, escape out of here. We're gonna to go to some live data. All right, so uh, this type of sensor is a Zicornia O2 sensor. So basically what ends up happening is that it's using uh, the air to determine how much uh, fuel is needed for the next cycle. So pretty much we should see an up, down, and up, down, and an up, down movement. All right, so. So we're gonna come in. Uh, AC pressure switch is open, that's okay. Uh, we want our O2 sensors. Let's see. Scroll down. We'll take our long term fuel trim one, two. We'll take our short term also. Oxygen sensor switching lean bank one. Rich lean, rich lean. Uh, oxygen sensor. I don't think that we're going to be seeing the voltages, but we might. Give me a minute. Rear O2 percent don't need that short-term fuel trim we do I might actually have to go into a uh, generic on this one guys I thought I was gonna be able to get into the oh their forward side but they're not giving me anything onto the voltage values so what we're gonna do we're gonna back out uh, we'll go back to this area and we'll load into the uh, the OEM side. And not the OEM side, the generic side. Alright, so let's let this load and I'll be right back. 
All right, so we're gonna click on this. We're gonna go to live data. So short term, short term, long term, long term. So if we take those ones and then we're gonna just take our oxygen sensor voltages for bank two. Bank one sensor two, bank one sensor one, uh, bank one sensor one, and bank two sensor two, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go to information real quick. Bank two sensor two, we're good on that one. And bank two sensor one, we're going to be good on that one. Perfect. All right, so those are the ones that we're going to be using. Um, I could put the bank one, but I'm not having an issue on bank one. Maybe I'll show you guys what a bank, a good bank looks like afterwards. Um, so what we're going to do right now, just press show. <laughs> All right. So the main thing that we have to focus on is our long-term fuel trim and our short-term fuel trim. All right. If we see, I'm hovering pretty close to around that zero mark, but I am having an issue onto my catalytic converters. So what I think that I'm having some back pressure that's happening and it's causing my numbers to be skewed a little bit. If we go on our short term for bank one, sorry about that, I had to free up some space. Um, if we go onto our short term uh, onto bank one, okay, you can see I'm hovering pretty close at zero. Bank two, I'm also hovering close to that zero. Uh, but if we look down onto our, um, oh, I didn't need this one. I just picked the wrong one. Let's go back for a minute. Oh, show all. Dang it. Sorry, let me get these data pits back. All right, so I got them back up. So as I was saying, our short-term fuel trim should be hovering around that zero mark, uh, which it is. Uh, our long-term fuel trim should also be uh, around that zero mark, which it is, so I'm happy with that. All right, um, our oxygen sensor output voltage bank one sensor one, which is this one, all right, is switching where it's supposed to be. All right, I'll graph these ones for everybody. That one and we'll graph this one okay but if we see what is happening here our rear o2 sensor is actually following our front o2 sensor so this is our front this is our rear now typically what ends up happening if your catalytic converter is uh, performing the way it's supposed to uh you're gonna have a switching operation due to your fuel trims um, or the injection of uh, fuel into the, into the mixture, and it's going to go rich, it's going to go lean, it's going to go rich, it's going to go lean. Now, your rear O2, if your cat is working properly, should be pretty much steady across the board. So there shouldn't be too much fluctuation into it. All right? So just by this, it's showing that my catalytic converter is not performing the way it's supposed to and that the emissions are actually getting past the first... Uh, Re, uh, redundant st uh, reductive stage of the catalytic converter and actually hitting into the second one and coming all the way through and hitting into my second O2 sensor. So there's like no nothing happening on to inside of my catalytic converter right now. All right, um, th that's what this is telling me. Uh, what we're gonna do is go show all real quick. I'm gonna take these guys off and we are gonna go with our bank one. Our voltage and our bank one sensor voltage. I might have an issue onto my bank one also. <laughs> yeah, my bank one is uh, actually starting to mess up also. So that's not good. But anyway, I only got one cat right now, so that's the one we're going to be dealing with. All right. So my bank one catalytic converter is actually starting to leave go also. So uh, yeah, that's not very. Uh, this, this is not going to be very helpful. <laughs> um, last time I checked, it was working properly. So and what we'll do is we'll go into this. Look on this. Yeah, bank one sensor two. So yeah, so my uh, bank one is actually starting to mess up also, um, but I'll deal with that later. Uh, right now, I got to deal with my uh, my bank two. But anyway, uh, that's the way it should be. Uh, mine obviously is not like that. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to make this quick video to show you guys uh, what to look for. Um, 
really didn't help that my bank one is actually messing up so uh like i said i just wanted to make this quick video to show you guys this uh so you guys can actually determine if your catalytic converter is actually operating properly or not and in my case i have two cats that are actually failing so i'm gonna switch this guy out and give you guys an after view hopefully uh it'll be a little bit better than what's on here but that's it for this one right now i'll bring you guys back after everything is replaced all right guys the catalytic converter is now replaced um the car is warmed up and i just wanted to show you guys the way that this should look when everything is working properly so as you can see right here we're switching between one and uh 0.9 onto my uh bank one sensor uh, bank two sensor one and my bank two sensor two is at 0.7 volts and is staying steady now if i give gas There's a reaction, and we're just going to take it on to a test drive. We are going to make sure that this guy goes into fuel cut and everything, but that seems to be a fix for me. So just give me a moment as we go on a test drive. So everything seems to be working the way it's supposed to. Um, I'll just give you guys a view of this. I'll bring up the RPMs real quick. All right. It sounds a lot better, guys, than what it did before, that's for sure. Uh, right there, I went into a fuel cut, so what we should see on the screen is a lean. We leaned out, we leaned out onto the bank two sensor two. Oh, you guys can't really see that. So we leaned out there and we leaned out there. So that for me is a fix on this guys. Um, and everything seems to be working the way it's supposed to. Uh, now I'm just gonna erase the code and we are gonna take and uh, work on the second check engine light that's onto this, which is gonna be my um, PA hose for my canister up to my fuel tank. So um, that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.